Is that Jacob? Yep, it is. It's Barack Obama, man. Do you remember me? Yeah. I remember you telling me that uh, your hair was going to be gray next time. <laughs> and I was not lying. This gentleman here, Mr. Philadelphia, was a Marine who had served with the National Security Council. So he comes and he brings his two little boys, his wife. This young man, uh, the older brother, he's very serious and he's asking me questions about, you know, weapon systems and, you know, the budget process. And it, clearly he's been studying. This young man, Jacob, he has a different kind of question. You know, he's kind of standing there looking at me for a second. And then he says, uh, is your hair like mine? I go, well, uh, you want to check and see? Then I lean down and I said, go ahead, touch it. And right as he was putting his hand on the top of my head, Pete Souza, my White House photographer, took the picture. I said, well, what do you think? He says, yeah, that's good. I think that's uh, pretty much what I got. I think this picture embodied one of the hopes that I'd had when I first started running for office. I remember telling Michelle and some of my staff, you know, I think that if I were to win, the day I was sworn in to office, young people, particularly African-American people, people of color, outsiders, folks who maybe didn't always feel like they belonged, they'd look at themselves differently to see a person who looked like them in the Oval Office. It would speak to black kids and Latino kids, and maybe gay kids and young girls, how they could see the world open up for them. I was five years old when I met President Obama in the Oval Office. When I was younger, I just thought the president was just my dad's boss. I didn't know how powerful he was, but I was slightly intimidated. It was a really big room the Oval Office. So I was a little shy and I kind of remember touching his hair and him towering over me. That was a pretty big highlight of my life. It is very wonderful to see representation in the government because if I get to see another black man be at the top, be at that pinnacle, then I want to follow that lead. Well, listen, I want to catch up with you because we found out that you were going to be graduating this month, and I thought, how can it be that that little boy that I was talking to in the Oval Office now is suddenly about to graduate from high school? Tell me what you've been doing. It, it seems as if you've been traveling around a lot, and you ended up going to high school in Uganda. Yes, my uh, dad joined the State Department. Right, right. So, so he got a, a bunch of various posts, and sometimes that's hard, moving from place to place. How's the experience been traveling? It's kind of difficult, but at the end of the day, we get to see a lot of things that a lot of other kids don't get the chance to. You get to talk to people, see their ideals for how they want to change the world and how we want to do it our own way. That's great. In this world, that, that can only uh, benefit you. My understanding is you're going to be going to the University of Memphis, huh? Yeah, that's the plan. Do you know what you want to study? Yeah, I'm doing political sciences. I think the White House visit clearly uh, inspired you, I hope. Yes, it really has. That's fantastic. So the thing I'm confused about is how, how did you get to be this big man? Is that like a kind of a mustache, some facial hair you got there? Yeah, I'm growing it. Oh, Lord. It sounds like you're doing great, man. And I'm so proud of you. Congratulations on your graduation. Great to talk to you. Tell your family that I said hi. All right. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Bye-bye.